More and more people have been asking me what I dose in my tanks. There are many reasons why I put off making this type of video, with the main reasons being that I don't think that dosing some product is essential to having a thriving, beautiful, acropora dominated tank. And as you will find out shortly, I'm not 100% sure that what I do dose is actually doing anything. Unfortunately, I can't just jump right in and tell you what I dose without first giving you my opinion and perspective on the whole topic of dosing in general. Being in the hobby for over 20 years, there is one thing that I know that new hobbyists might not realize. It's that, in my opinion, our tanks today aren't any healthier than they were in the late 2000s. And I'm not only talking about those stunning tanks of the month on Reef Central back in the day, I'm also talking about mine. I can't honestly say that my Acropora today are any healthier than my Acros a decade ago. Sure we have royal blue LEDs to make our corals pop more. And we have a larger variety of Acropora available to us now. On top of that, the tools that we use to show off our tank, like cameras and software, have improved. But none of this means that we're doing a better job today compared to back then. So if you can believe that, there is one thing that we can deduce from that point that I just made. And it's this. If some dosing product or method came out in the last decade, most likely it's not necessary to be successful in this hobby. The second point that I want to make is related to this saying that we hear often. There are many ways to be successful in this hobby. This is a true statement and I don't think anyone would debate it. We see it everywhere. This person is doing this and his tank looks awesome. She is doing this and she swears by it. And wow, look at her results. But this other reefer tried what she's doing and it didn't work. But he found success after using this particular product and is publicly endorsing it on Instagram. Do you see how what people dose and what method they use is not really helpful? Don't get me wrong, I understand that it's interesting to know what people use, but it really needs to be taken with a grain of salt. But let me offer another interpretation of the statement, there are many ways to be successful. This one requires a diagram to help illustrate my point. Say you have four reefers, all of them have beautiful, thriving Acropora dominated tanks. Now they all do the basics of course, but reefer A doses this product. Reefer B doesn't use one specific product, but actually uses an entire pre-prescribed method that requires the dosage of many different products. Reefer C feeds her tank this popular coral food twice a week. Reefer D doesn't dose or feed anything other than fish food. Now everyone should agree that this is what you would get if you were to take a sample of successful reefers. And really it's the reason for the statement there are many ways to be successful in this hobby. All these reefers have awesome tanks, but yet they all seem to be doing things differently. But are they really doing things differently? That may be the assessment on a superficial level if you were to only focus on the flashy products that they're using. But if you took that away, you could see that there is actually a commonality between all of them. And that common thread is that they all probably do a great job of taking care of the basics. So that is the most important thing that I want you to take away from this video. In my experience, if you just did a great job with the basic, boring, fundamental stuff that experienced reefers are always preaching, the same stuff that we've been doing for over a decade, you are going to be successful with Acropora. Not only successful for a year or two and then you have a tank crash, I'm talking about being successful for over a decade if you wanted to. Don't get me wrong though, it's entirely possible that some product may give you a little bit better colors or a little bit better growth. I'm not debating that. I just want to make sure that I communicate to you, especially the newer Acropora keepers, that all these flashy products aren't going to do anything if you can't do a good job with the fundamentals of Acropora keeping. So my advice is, first make sure you can grow and color up acros using the basics. Once you have that down, then experiment with the multitude of products that claim to make your tank beautiful. Alright, now that I made that point, it's time to get into what I dose. I quickly want to mention fish food because to me it's a form of dosing. It's how the corals eventually get nutrients, right? People like to add nitrates and or phosphates for nutrients, I'll just adjust my fish feedings. If I feel my corals are getting too light for my taste, I'll feed the fish a little more, and vice versa. 
Just keep in mind that how much and what I feed is always changing. For example, about 5 months ago I was feeding a boatload of pellets. But I realized that I was raising my nutrients too high and as a result some corals browned out. So eventually I stopped feeding pellets altogether. Currently I feed 2 cubes of frozen food and 2 heaping teaspoons of flakes in each tank daily. There are two additives that I've been dosing since 2009. The first is Lugols as a source of iodine. The topic of iodine in the reef aquarium is pretty complicated and whether a tank needs supplementation is unclear. And it doesn't help that our hobby grade iodine test kits are inaccurate. But regardless, I've been dosing a small amount for over a decade and I will continue to do so. I use regular Lugols that I found on eBay. It's the same stuff as the Lugols packaged by aquarium companies although the concentration may be different. And it's usually a couple of bucks cheaper. I dose about one drop every other day in my 120 gallon and in my 140 gallon. I never stopped dosing it for an extended period of time, so I can't say if I noticed any negative effects after stopping. As far as testing, I do get ICP tests once in a while, and that's really the only way I check my iodine levels. An important point is that, even though I dose iodine, it sometimes comes back a little low on my ICP tests. So I do think that my tank is consuming it. Though I couldn't give you a good reason why it needs to be dosed, if you looked hard enough you will find other SPS keepers who also dose iodine. If you decide to dose it, definitely follow the instructions on the bottle and obviously it would be best if you had a way to check your iodine levels periodically. The other thing that I've been dosing for over 10 years is chelated iron. I've been using Brightwell Ferion the whole time. I think most people know of the benefit of iron for algae and it's partly because iron is critical for photosynthesis. So with that in mind, I reasoned in my head a long time ago, since corals contain the photosynthetic algae called zooxanthellae, that corals also need iron as they grow. I don't know if I just totally made that up in my head, or maybe I read it somewhere back in the day. I actually looked this up recently and there's some new literature talking about the importance of iron to coral health. However, even if this hypothesis is correct, the whole topic of whether we need to actually supplement it in the aquarium is another debate. But again, despite the lack of strong evidence for iron supplementation, I'm going to keep dosing it. If you decide to try iron for yourself, just follow the instructions on the bottle. And obviously, it would be great if you had a way to test for it. My iron usually comes back a little high on my ICP tests. One important point with both iodine and iron, and any other thing that I dose, is that I'll stop dosing them temporarily if I notice something is wrong in my tank. I do have AcroPower that I'm currently dosing, but I tend to dose it on and off. I've had this bottle for over a year now. Honestly, I'm not sure it does anything for me. If anything, my corals will look a little more vibrant if I haven't dosed it in a long time. If I do dose it on a regular basis, like for a couple of months straight, what usually happens is I'll end up asking myself, is this stuff even doing anything? And then I'll stop it for a while. I'll also stop it if I see that some corals are getting too dark for my taste. And I've also stopped dosing it in the past after I saw an algae pop up in my tank that I'm not used to seeing. The truth is, I'm not 100% sure it does anything for me. Or, I'm not sure it's much different than having some nitrates floating around in the tank. If you're curious about how much Acropyro I dose, I pretty much follow the directions on the bottle for once weekly dosing. So that's what I dose. Hopefully you understand why I avoided making this video. Because for most supplements, it's hard to be certain they are needed. And generally, I'm hesitant to recommend anything because I've been in the hobby long enough to know that what works for one reefer often doesn't work for another reefer. But that's why it's important to stress that. If you did a great job with the basic, boring fundamentals of reef keeping, you will get great results. In a hobby where we are constantly being bombarded by supplement marketing, and where there seems to be numerous ways to be successful, it's easy to overlook that the very foundation of reef keeping not only is the common attribute in successful reef tanks, but it's also the key to success. Thanks for watching.